I saw Jesus was like this. I saw Jesus yeah. like this. I saw him. Yeah. Like this. Yeah. Like this. Yeah. In this way, I saw him. Yeah. In this way. And Good morning, Gold Thunder. This is the summer stay in August. Beautiful day today. And and we're yeah. just a group of Christians. We come from different churches. Down. We're not a cult. Uh, but we're here to share the good news with you for a few minutes. And uh, we've got plenty of free literature here if you take. Or if you want to ask any questions, come up to us. There's plenty of guys around here. Or if you need prayer for anything, come up to us. Uh, we don't know everything, but we know enough. So just come up, take the literature, if you ask questions, any good questions you've got. I'm still asking questions today myself. So we don't know everything, but we know enough. I just want to share some things with you today. Um, Let's take this as ordinary, ordinary guys. I find out Jesus called me to follow him because he's the life. In the Bible says, I am the life of the world. If you follow me, you need to be right. Okay. And I just want to cover a couple of things. A couple of words. Love and compassion. Yes. Love and compassion. This is amazing. You ask any mother whether she has love and compassion. You bet your life she does. Do you think about this, a mother who has children throughout this world, and does she, does she not show her love and compassion by feeding her children, by nurturing her children, by taking care of her children, by keeping them safe? That is a verb. Those two words, love and compassion, are verbs. They are what we call in English uh, action words. They're action words. You can't really say you have compassion for someone and yet you see them uh, on the, at the curbside and they're injured and you don't stop. That's not compassion in action. That's not love in action. Love and compassion are two verbs. And the wonderful thing of Scripture is that our God Almighty showed that love and compassion towards us. This great, powerful God, this great, powerful God of the Bible loves His creation so much. He's not distant from us. He's not transcendent. He's not transcendent. He wants to know us. He wants the relationship with us. He wants that relationship. And he says, if you turn to me, then I will turn to you. That's what our God says. He's not a distant God. This wonderful creator loves us, all of us, and wants that relationship with us. And out of that love and compassion, which is two verbs, he sent his son to die on the cross to pay the price that we could not pay. And he did it for us. That's what love is. And scripture says that there is a record of debt that we owe God. Before I come to that, I just want to mention a couple of his names. He's not just a prophet. Some take the idea of Christ and try and fit it into their theology. Um, and they borrow some stories about Christ. But of course it doesn't fit into their theology. Because they don't write about who he really is. Christ is called a bridegroom. He's called the I Am. He's called the last Adam, the propitiation, the redeemer, of the word. He's called the light of the world. How about that? In darkness, he is the light of the world. He's called mighty God. He's called Omega, the refuge, the root of David. He's called almighty. 
Well, it's called the Alpha and Omega, um, the seed of Abraham, the mighty God. He's called the Advocate. And if ever you wanted a good lawyer in a court, Christ is the one. He's called the Advocate, the Bread of Life, the Comforter, the Deliverer, the First and the Last. He's also called God. I love this. He's called the bright morning star. He's called the Lamb of God, the Prince of Peace. Where in this world do we get peace? All we hear 24 7. He's negative, negative, negative. Wars, rumors of wars. The media love to push this out and control our thinking. But Christ is the Prince of Peace. He's the mediator. He's the mercy seat where we go to find mercy. He's the prophet. He's the savior, the son of man. But he wasn't just a prophet. He is the Christ. The Christ of God. And he said with his own lips when he stood before the high priest. And the high priest said, I am putting you under oath. And he said, you claim to be the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus says, it is as you say. So clearly he is who he says he is. The scripture says that Christ lovingly went to the cross to pay that price because he loves us. We couldn't pay that price ourselves. And it, scripture says, by cancelling the record of debt that stood against us with its legal demands, this he set aside, nailing it to the cross. So we all have a debt to God. My debt to God is probably a lot bigger than yours. But my debt to God was nailed to that cross. He paid it for me. I couldn't pay it by myself. That if I would turn and put my trust in him, I would turn and put my trust in what Christ did on the cross. For me, he would give me eternal life. The same as you. Today is the day of salvation. If today in your quiet time you turn towards him, put your trust in him, you will receive eternal life. If you're sincere. So... We all have a debt to God. You say, hang on, Les. Hang on. What do you mean I have a debt to God? Let me ask you a few questions. I'm not judging you. You judge yourself. Let me ask you a couple of things from the moral law. How many lies have you told in your life? 10, 15, 20,000, too many you can't remember. What do you call someone who continually tells lies? A liar. Thank you, a liar. <laughs> Let me ask you another one. Have you ever taken anything that did not belong to you? Thief. Even if it was a pencil from school. When I was a lad, I used to go into my local sweet shop, fill my pockets up with sweets. I would never pay for them. And I'd walk out the shop and then I'd share it with all the schoolmates. That made me popular with them, but then I got caught and my conscience condemned me and what I was doing was stealing. That was wrong. So have you ever taken anything that did not belong to you? What do you call someone who takes things that does not belong to them? A thief. Let me ask you one more. You ever lusted after another person in 24-7 pornography today? very, very difficult not to lust after another person. Jesus took it further and said, if you lust after another, even if you're single or married, you have committed adultery therein. Let me ask you one more. You ever taken God's name in vain? Let's say you're doing some home DIY. You've got a hammer and a nail and you miss the nail as I have done. You hit your thumb and out comes that curse word. And what do we do? Who is it that we curse with our tongue? We don't curse beauty. We don't curse sin, do we? We curse Jesus Christ, the most perfect man, who 
whoever walked this earth, the most loving son of God, and yet we curse him. God says, those that take my name in vain shall not go unpunished. So on your day, the same as me, I'm just sharing with you what Scripture says, what God says. It is appointed for one day for man to die, and then the judgment. On your day, when you stand before God, are you innocent or guilty when he compares you with the, his moral law? Then ask yourself this. If he's a loving, righteous, just and merciful God, he must carry out justice. Just the same as the court, the judge in the county court in Northampton, if he did not give out justice, we would say he was such a bad judge. But God is a perfect judge. And on that day, when we stand before him and we compare ourselves with the moral law, which we've all broken, I've broken it. Scripture says that if we break one of the moral laws, we break all of them. So we're all in this same situation. And we would be, if we're honest with ourselves, we are guilty before God. And then you have to ask yourself, is it heaven which is with God and all his love, all his provision, all his mercy and grace, or is it hell without him? That's what hell is. Hell is actually living eternally in the absence of God, away from him. So you ask yourself that question yourself. Now come back to the cross. What a loving thing Jesus did. He came and gave his life's blood on the cross for you and me. That if we would turn to him, and trust what he did for us out of his love no. remember this God this God is not a distant God this God wants to know you intimately he can count every hair on your head he knows everything about you he wants that relationship with you because he loves you so that's what Christ did. Paying that price in his shed blood for you. There's no second chance. There's no second chance after we die. Christ has made it clear for us today. And there's a beautiful word in the Bible. But let's come back to this love. I mentioned at the beginning two verbs, love and compassion. And this God demonstrated his love and compassion by sending his only begotten son to pay that price on the cross. That was a love and compassion in action. The scripture says that God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Isn't that amazing? And for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting love, life. That is love in action. There is no other God in history. If you go do your study, there is no other God that demonstrates his love for us in action, demonstrates it by the way that Jesus Christ did. There is no one else. You'll find any other God is distant. Any other God does not want that personal relationship with you. Any other God does not show that love for you. But Christ did. There's a wonderful word in the Bible. Yeah. And it's called whoever. And it says, Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. It doesn't matter what color skin you are. 
It doesn't matter what country you come from. It doesn't matter what country you come from. It doesn't matter what religion you were taught in the past. Whoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Yeah, Scripture says today is the oh, day of salvation. Don't oh, yeah, put it off. Oh, yeah, wait, next week. Don't we're, put uh, it off. We're gonna have a barbecue. It's the most important and thing you can think about. It's the most that? important thing uh, you so can contemplate. We are all guilty, and, guilty and I'm more guilty than down. anyone. My debt to God was probably a lot bigger than yours, but my debt was nailed to that cross. Thank you, God. He did it for me, out of his love for me. Because we cannot work ourselves into heaven. Not by good works. I know some religions claim that I'm going to add up all my good works and hope that they supersede all my bad works. And they don't know to the last second whether they will receive any paradise or eternal God. But here, Christ, because of what he did on the cross, if you are sincere and you turn to him and repent and turn and say you're sorry, you will know today that you have eternal life. You will know that you have eternal life. You can walk this earth knowing you have eternal life because you've been forgiven and you've been saved and given eternal life. So that's my prayer for you, my neighbors and friends. Um, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Thank you for listening.